Thermi Rome is a Japanese film released in 2012, directed by Hideki Takeuchi and based on the manga of the same name by Mari Yamazaki. The film blends historical drama, comedy, and fantasy elements to tell a unique story about time travel and cultural exchange between ancient Rome and modern Japan. The story begins in ancient Rome, where we meet Lucius, an architect grappling with financial woes and a creative block. His innovative concepts are consistently rejected by clients who consider his ideas outdated and irrelevant. One day, in an attempt to unwind, Lucius reluctantly joins a friend at a bustling public bathhouse, which he finds to be the least relaxing place due to the noisy and unclothed patrons. Overwhelmed by the environment, he submerges himself underwater, and soon, he notices a small whirlpool forming at the other end of the tub. Curiosity drives him to investigate, but he is swiftly swept away by a powerful current. Within moments, Lucius finds himself in a tunnel-like passage, struggling for breath. After a desperate struggle, he finally surfaces, only to discover he is no longer in the Roman bathhouse. To his astonishment, he stands in a modern Japanese bathhouse, surrounded by bewildered elderly men. Lucius concludes that these individuals, with their Mongolian features, must belong to a flat-faced tribe. Once he overcomes the initial shock, he realizes that this bathhouse is far more advanced than any he has encountered in his time, with innovative features such as baskets, taps, and a massage device that amaze him. Inadvertently, he stumbles into the women's changing area and is promptly knocked out by an irate elderly woman. The narrative then introduces us to Mami, a struggling manga artist who draws inspiration from Lucius's unconventional appearance to create a new character. She begins sketching his portrait. Later on, Lucius regains consciousness and is offered a bottle of flavored milk, which he finds utterly delightful. Its sweet and cold taste overwhelms him, causing him to lose consciousness once more. Upon awakening, Lucius is back in ancient Rome, surrounded by concerned men who inform him that he nearly drowned in the bath and was found moments ago. Initially, he believes his encounter with the flat-faced tribe was a mere dream, but he spots the empty milk bottle by his side. The story then fast-forwards two months. Lucius presents an advanced renovation proposal to the bathhouse owner, receiving accolades for his creativity and earning a substantial income. The bathhouse now incorporates innovations like baskets, massage booths, and sweet milk to enhance the bathing experience. While in the bath, an elderly man expresses a desire to have a bathhouse in his home. As Lucius contemplates this, he is once again swept away by a current, landing in a 21st century bathtub. A man enters and requests Lucius's assistance with his bath, leading Lucius to discover modern amenities such as a showerhead and shower cap. Coincidentally, this house belongs to Mommy, who finds Lucius lying on the floor. She rushes to get her sketchbook but returns to find him vanished. Back in Rome, Lucius constructs a bathtub for the elderly man, amassing a substantial fortune. However, his wife remains unsatisfied, yearning for a child and complaining about his constant preoccupation with work. A heated argument ensues, concluding with her cursing him and departing. A few days later, Lucius is approached by a messenger from Emperor Hadrianus, known for his cruelty and rumored to have eliminated opposing cabinet members. Intrigued by the buzz surrounding Lucius's inventions, even the emperor expresses interest in his work. During their meeting, the emperor praises Lucius for his artistic achievements with the public bathhouse and commissions him to create a unique and groundbreaking personal bath. Lucius accepts the challenge, determined to impress the emperor. Throughout the night, Lucius searches the town for inspiration to create a magnificent bathhouse but finds himself embarrassed by his inability to generate original ideas. Suddenly, he falls into a pit and vanishes. In a contemporary scene, we encounter Mami working at a bathroom supply store, struggling to sustain her manga artist career. One day, she accidentally leaves the water running, filling a tub to the brim. To her astonishment, Lucius appears in the tub, gasping for air. They manage to communicate while the store manager complains about the strange man, giving Mommy and Lucius an opportunity to interact. Lucius requests a tour of the establishment and offers her a coin. Despite the language barrier, Mommy obliges and shows him around. Lucius becomes fascinated by the urinals and speculates that printed toilet paper holds the secrets of the flat-faced tribe's success. However, what captivates him most is a bidet, which transports him to a state of bliss whenever he uses it. Inspired by everything he has encountered, he returns to Rome and constructs the greatest bathhouse the world has ever seen for the emperor. This remarkable establishment boasts a toilet with a continuous water supply for personal hygiene, a tub with bubbles generated by slaves blowing into a pipe, 
a luminous aquarium, and fragrant candles. His achievement surpasses the emperor's expectations, earning him a special necklace adorned with a distinctive sculpture featuring both canine and human elements. Eager to share his accomplishment with his wife, Lucius rushes home, only to discover her engaged in an intimate encounter with his closest friend. Meanwhile, in the future, Mommy returns to her small hometown, having faced repeated failures in generating ideas for a compelling manga and being let go from her part-time Yosh. She takes up a position at a local bathhouse and delves into the study of ancient Roman history. The coin given to her by Lucius and his sudden disappearance piques her curiosity, leading her to wonder if he could be a person from a distant past. Back in Rome, Lucius, devastated by his wife's betrayal, loses all zest for life. One day, a messenger approaches him with concerns about the emperor. It appears that the emperor has recently lost his son and believes that a crocodile is the reincarnation of his child. He entrusts Lucius with the task of designing a place to house and care for this crocodile, with the condition that its every need be met. Lucius must proceed with extreme caution. For if anything were to happen to the crocodile, he would bear the blame and face severe consequences as a national criminal. Following this, Lucius heads to the Emperor's bathhouse to inspect the water flow, as requested. However, when he enters the tub, he is unexpectedly thrust into the future for the third time. He emerges from the water and finds himself confined within a cage surrounded by crocodiles, discovering that he is now in a crocodile sanctuary. Simultaneously, Mommy is also at the sanctuary with a date whom she finds unappealing. She makes every effort to shake off her companion and is overjoyed when she stumbles upon Lucius inside the cage. She frees him and provides him with a tour of the sanctuary, completely disregarding her previous date. Lucius acquires the knowledge needed to properly care for crocodiles and create a suitable habitat for them. Mommy also introduces him to archery to confirm her suspicion that he might indeed be a Roman man. Lucius impressively hits all the targets, validating her hunch. Eventually, he encounters a hot spring that transports him back to his own time. A few months later, the emperor successfully establishes an ideal environment for his crocodile, son, and he begins to treat Lucius as a beloved member of his family, frequently inviting him to the palace. The city thrives until the emperor receives word of rebellions launching an attack on his troops. They express deep dissatisfaction with his leadership and are determined to remove him from power regardless of the cost. The conflict between the Emperor's troops and the rebels wages on in a grueling battle that spans over a year. At this point, the aging Emperor contemplates retirement and intends to pass the throne to his nephew, Sianius. Sianius's inaugural project as Emperor involves constructing a new bathhouse to gain the people's favor. Consequently, the Emperor seeks Lucius' assistance in this endeavor. This poses a dilemma for Lucius as his values do not align with Sianius, who comes across as arrogant and proud. Lucius realizes that if Sianius ascends to the throne, it would spell doom for the Roman Empire. After careful consideration, Lucius approaches Sianius and firmly declines to collaborate on the project. Sianius reminds him that defying the emperor amounts to treason, punishable by death. However, Lucius remains resolute in his decision. He approaches a fellow architect, beseeching him to undertake the project, but this architect is incensed at Lucius for causing his financial troubles. A heated altercation ensues, resulting in Lucius being pushed into a well. In the subsequent scene, Lucius finds himself back with the flat-faced tribe. Injured and in pain, they care for him as one of their own. They lead him to a hot spring, believed to possess healing properties when bathed in. They also offer him fermented alcohol, which burns his throat. Here, Lucius encounters Mommy, who has learned to speak basic Latin. She inquires about his name, but Lucius, inebriated, falls onto her, and the two plunge into the lake. When they regain consciousness, they find themselves in Rome, astonishing Mommy. She learns that Lucius faces execution for defying the Emperor's orders. Worried, she attempts to persuade him to take on the project, but her efforts are in vain. Lucius departs with his belongings to safeguard his life. Meanwhile, in Japan, the group of elderly men embark on a quest to find Mommy but ends up submerged in the same lake. Like Lucius, they too get caught in a whirlpool, transporting them back in time. As Lucius journeys to a different city, he stumbles upon a natural hot spring atop a hill. Recalling the care he received from the flat-faced tribe, he envisions the spring as a valuable resource for healing the emperor's wounded soldiers. He rushes to share his idea with Mommy, who agrees. Subsequently, Lucius approaches the emperor, presenting his vision and claiming that Antonius had instructed him to create the spring. 
Antonius, a more suitable heir to the throne than Cianius, is preferred by Lucius to improve his standing in the emperor's eyes. After receiving approval to develop the spring, Lucius, Mami, and the flat-faced tribe begin their work. In a matter of hours, they construct the initial hut. Over time, numerous houses spring up around the hot spring, transforming it into a vital recuperation point for the soldiers. The tribe tends to the wounded and facilitates their swift recovery, utilizing their knowledge of modern medicine. Months later, the soldiers emerge victorious in their battle against the rebels. They celebrate with merriment, indulging in drink and dance. Lucius and Mami share an intimate conversation during this time, having developed deep feelings for each other through their collaborative efforts. Lucius experiences a level of happiness he has never known before, but this joy is short-lived as the flat-faced tribe abruptly vanishes. Mami also begins to fade from his sight, but before she disappears completely, he imparts to her that there are multiple paths leading to Rome. In the subsequent scene, the emperor appoints Antonius as his advisor, and Lucius is honored before the public for his valor in battle. People recognize that without him, victory would have remained elusive. The film concludes with Lucius and Mami embracing their love and beginning a new life together in Japan as they reunite once more, as they watch the sunset while sitting in a modern Japanese bath. The movie ends with a sense of hope and the idea that cultural exchange can bring about positive change and enrich people's lives. Thermi Rome is a heartwarming and comedic exploration of cultural differences, the power of innovation, and the enduring nature of love. It seamlessly blends historical elements with contemporary humor to create an entertaining and thought-provoking film.